I want you to think about how you reacted to the most stressful and scary moment of your life. You never truly know how you'll react in a fight or flight moment until it happens. There's a moment right at the start of an ambush when every soldier has to make an important choice. Do they push forward into the hornet's nest of bullets or do they retreat and take cover? It's not always clear which is the best option. This is the true story of the difference that one soldier can make on the battlefield. In Afghanistan, Sal Junta was faced with a split second decision where his choice would change the outcome of one of the worst firefights in the entire war in Afghanistan. Sal Junta was born in 1985 in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. His great grandparents came to the United States from Italy. And he didn't really have any close family members who served in the military prior to when he joined. His early life was pretty typical and uneventful by all means. When he was 18 years old, he was working at a sandwich shop. He felt uninspired by school and work. Sal said in his book, simply put, I was an idiot, drinking, hanging out with the boys, chasing girls, ignoring my schoolwork, getting fat and lazy. It was a time in his life that I think, you know, a lot of young people can relate to. In 2003, he was slapping together sandwiches when he overheard on the radio that the army was handing out free t-shirts. So he decided he'd go down to the recruiter and grab himself some sweet army swag. But once he got there, the recruiter challenged him in a way that he wasn't really expecting. He said, this is your chance to make a difference or you can be a pussy and not do it. This really got under Sal's skin. He realized he wanted to serve a higher purpose, but more importantly, he wanted to jump out of planes and shoot bad guys. He thought this would be a chance to have some adventure in his life. Fast forward to 2007 and Sal is deploying as a rifle team leader in the infantry in charge of the lives of three soldiers. He was headed to the most dangerous part of Afghanistan, the Korangal Valley. This was his second deployment, and he noticed right off the bat that this was going to be very different than the year that he was here last time. The soldiers he was replacing looked like they had barely eaten or showered in weeks. They looked like they had been through it. Welcome to the Valley of Death. Not the kind of nickname you want for your area of operations over there. Not long after arriving, things went from bad to worse. The tempo of the combat was unlike anything Sal had seen before, with constant engagements with the enemy. His company was tasked with a six day long major combat operation called Rock Avalanche. A pretty badass name that implied the kind of aggressive approach they would be taking going forward. His unit's mission was to cut off the head of the snake, eliminate enemy leadership in Korangal Valley and provide enough security so that locals could build an important road through the area. 400 heavily armed American infantrymen made their way out into the valley without knowing exactly what they were walking into. In hindsight, they were walking into a trap. The enemy was expecting them. During the early days of Rock Avalanche, an event foreshadowed what would happen later. Another squad was overrun and a soldier was KIA. His night vision goggles and rifle were stolen by the enemy. This was not good. The insurgents had gotten close enough to potentially capture KIA American soldiers. They were right on top of them. And even if they were beaten back, it was still a horrifying prospect that they could be taken alive or KIA. This would serve as an omen for what was yet to come in their future. Sal's platoon was tasked with hunting the equipment down. Those were sensitive items that the US military was not gonna just let disappear without a fight. In hindsight, this is exactly what the enemy wanted them to do. They knew that the US military considered night vision goggles and weapons sensitive items and that they would come looking for it. They were walking blind into what the enemy had predicted and carefully laid out for them. To this day, Sal believes that what they were walking into was a carefully orchestrated and well-funded fight. The hell he was about to face wasn't the work of irregulars. This wasn't your usual daytime farmers that they were about to face off against. Sal was being surrounded by professional fighters who were brought in from outside of Afghanistan specifically to prepare and execute a complicated, well-coordinated attack on that day. 18 American soldiers were walking in a single file formation with about 10 meters between them. Sal was fourth in line from the front of this movement with Sergeant Brennan and Specialist Eckrode and Gallardo ahead of him. That's when it happened. From his viewpoint, the ambush started as complete chaos. Sergeant Brennan and Specialist Eckrode were immediately hit by multiple rounds. The enemy was within 15 meters in front of them. These insurgents had the advantage of being behind cover, trees, rocks. They were firing from well-fortified positions. 
They were firing fully automatic on their AK-47s. He had no time to think or move. He had nowhere to hide or run. Sal's fight or flight instincts kicked in. Running away wasn't going to help him. He was out in the open and he realized that as soon as he turned to run, he would be gunned down where he stood. He was a sitting duck. Military investigators later recreated every minute of the action and determined that over 200 rounds were fired in his direction in this initial volley. On his flank, the other enemy position opened up with belt-fed machine guns, essentially surrounding his team with fire. This is how enveloping fire works. It was a textbook L-shaped ambush that took a lot of coordination and training. It was the most complex attack Sal had ever witnessed in either of his deployments in Afghanistan. The second line of the ambush started to walk in to surround them. Sal was shot directly square in the chest by a 7.62 round. He felt the round knock him back and it took the wind out of him. More bullets ripped through his assault pack and this would have killed him in any previous war, but thanks to his body armor, the bullet was stopped. This is when Sal made his decision. He wasn't going to run, he was going to fight. He returned fire, emptying his magazine. Directly in front of him, he saw one of his best friends, Gallardo, get hit in the head and go down. With no regard for his own safety, Sal ran through a hail of gunfire and dragged his buddy back to cover. Fortunately, his friend was okay. His helmet had deflected the bullet. They then performed the textbook counter response to a close ambush, which is actually a very counterintuitive move. It goes against every human instinct for self-preservation. Sal advanced straight towards the enemy, directly into oncoming fire while lobbing hand grenades and shooting. This helped to break up the attack and quiet the ambush. He was the only right move that he could have made. Specialist Junta frantically looked around for Alpha Team Leader Sergeant Brennan. Then he noticed some figures off in the distance were moving around. He was confused at first because he wasn't sure if somehow the squad behind him had gotten in front of him, but that would have been impossible. That's when he realized what was happening. It was two of the enemy, and they were dragging the body of his friend, Alpha Team Leader Josh Brennan. They were trying to capture his squad leader alive. Sal raised his rifle and shot both of them, instantly killing one and wounding the other who retreated away. They dropped Sergeant Brennan right there on the ground. Sal gave Sergeant Brennan first aid until a medic from another platoon arrived. B-1s and Apache helicopters unleashed their fire, which allowed his unit to regroup after the ambush. The medevac helicopter took Sergeant Brennan away, but the damage was too severe and he would pass away in surgery. Their platoon medic, Doc Mendoza, also died from a gunshot wound he suffered during the ambush. Specialist Salvatore Genta was credited with being an integral part of allowing his platoon to defeat the enemy ambush. He received the Medal of Honor for his actions on that day. It was a historic moment. He was the first living US military personnel since the Vietnam War to receive the Medal of Honor. Salvatore Junta can be seen as an unlikely hero. As a young man, he wanted adventure, and what he got was far more than that in the form of learning discipline and respect. In a near ambush situation, the answer is charge the ambush line. Uh, and I know this, we all know this, that's, that's basic training, that's battle drill. Um, it's easier said than done, but I knew that that's where Brennan must have gone. If he wasn't there, he didn't wait for us, he did what had to be done. I read his book, Living With Honor, and you can just tell how he's a very humble soldier who tries to live his life in a way that honors the award that he received. He made a split second decision in the moment that showed his true character. And for that, he's one of America's greatest military heroes. I talk a lot on this channel about the exciting aspects of weapons and war, but we should never lose sight of the horrible reality and the sacrifices that are made when these systems have to be put to use.